We're joined by Mike Grimm, radio voice of the Minnesota Golden Gopher basketball team and Gopher football team, talking about Andre Holland's uh, turnovers for him. Led the team in turnovers. The team as a whole averaged 18.4 turnovers a game last year. Tubby mentioned that this afternoon, that that's an area they want to start concentrating on. I asked Austin Hollins about that, and he said this year, guys feel much more comfortable with the ball, and there's more ball handlers out there. If you've got guys that can take care of the ball and then get them into a half-court set, now with Trevor back out there and possibly Mo Walker in longer stretches and healthy again, all of a sudden you've got a team that can run the break but also set up and operate in that half court. You've got a team that can give you different looks and can really cause some problems here once you get into Big Ten play. Yeah, no doubt about it. I do think that this team, I think they're going to want to play a little faster than they did much of last year. Big I mean, I think Iowa and Indiana really are the only two teams in the league that want to get out and run. Michigan State, can, they're one of the rare hybrids. They can run or play slow down. They're so well coached. But I think Minnesota do them well with the depth they've got to try to increase the pace of the game. And this is really hard for Tubby. And I don't know. How, well, I think this will be an interesting storyline to see how it unfolds as the year goes on. He just may have to live with it you know, a careless turnover a time or two <laughs> and just say, look, that's how we got to play. We got to score points. They're yeah. going to defend well. They may do some full court pressure. Um, that said, you're right. They do need to improve on that. They do need to get better with the basketball. I think Andre Hollins, a lot of the turnovers were careless, especially early in the season where you kind of learn and what, you know, what, what he can and can't do at the college level. He also with him, he had a weird knack of picking up a ton of offensive fouls, which in the college NCAA, that's technically a turnover. Mm -hmm. He counted offensive charging fouls as a turnover. I think he'll learn what he can do and not do that way as well. Uh, he had just a weird deal with uh, getting some offensive fouls, which count as turnovers. But I think by and large, his team will need to take care of the ball better. But I also think and this will be interesting to see, is that they're just going to have to live on occasion with a turnover or two. Well, I've sat behind the bench, and uh, <laughs> I, I can tell you that Tubby is not a fan exactly. of those turnovers. So if, if he can learn to live with it, that'll be very interesting to see. How about this guy that we just saw out there, Austin Hollins. Tubby talked about him this afternoon. Very good shooter, but also more of the uh, a very consistent player for him last year. Didn't miss any time due to injury, a team that saw – you know, they lost a grand total of 60 practices this past year due to all the various injuries. But he mentioned that Austin Hollins is probably their most consistent defender. Uh, they're going to need that out there, especially at that wing. Now you've got some guys back with Trevor that can help defend inside. Having a good lockdown wing defender is, uh, is, is priceless in any league. No doubt. And he's one of my favorite all-time players. Uh, he has the total package. One, just as a player, he does a lot of different. He can shoot. He can defend. He can rebound. He can block shots. Uh, he runs the floor. I actually think, I asked him today, he looks like he may have, maybe has grown a little bit, I think. I think he's maybe an inch taller. He might be up wow. to 6'5". Uh, you know, he played at 6'4 last year. He's, he continues to, you know, have a good toned body. He's done the weight w room work. But I think the most interesting thing about Austin Hollins is the uh, family background he has. Of course, his father's the head coach of the Memphis Grizzlies. But uh, th this sidebar story on him, Ron Jersey, the associate head coach of the Gophers, says, and he's been a two-time head coach and been an assistant everywhere. He says in all the years that he has been coaching basketball, Austin Holland's mother is maybe his favorite parent of all time. The way she raised him, the way, you know, because Lionel was gone a lot with mm -hmm. travel and basketball and everything. Uh, he, he's such a polite guy. She is very excited about her son. She comes and visits. And so I think that tells you a little bit about why he is such a good all-around student athlete. I mean, you hear that term used a lot, uh, but he is a prototype, man. He's a prototype student athlete, fun kid to talk to, and uh, the Gophers are lucky to have him. You know, when we talk about his shooting, his defense, he's also a guy who had a couple just – a uh, uh, highlight reel tip dunks and watching him uh, during warm-ups here today. He got up high on some. I asked him this afternoon if he's going to be in the slam dunk contest. He kind of laughed it off and said he was going to leave it to the younger guys. But <laughs> I wouldn't mind seeing him out there to see what he can do because to go along with that total package that you talked about, the guy's got a heck of a lot of athletic ability. He's a real good athlete. He runs too. I mean, he, he really does have – uh, you know, a wide array of, of uh, a nice skill set from a basketball standpoint. He runs, he jumps, you know, he can do everything. Yeah, I'd, I'm surprised he's not in the dunk contest, but uh, he may he may surprise us. Maybe he will be <laughs> in it. I will say this, uh, we're in for a treat because I do. Th this team definitely has some jumpers. There's no doubt that Tubby and his staff have gone out and targeted athletes. The two freshmen can get up and jump. In fact, the two older guys that most people think might be the favorites here, Coleman, Joe Coleman and uh, Rodney Williams, 
both told me separately earlier today. Not, they, they didn't collaborate on this. I asked them who they thought would win. Both said it'll be one of those two freshmen wow. because they both can jump. So on, independently on their own, each of them <laughs> said it'll be one of the two freshmen. Well, if those guys, if the two freshmen, Ellenson and Bugs, are going to be pushing Ronnie Williams and Joe Coleman, we are in for a treat coming up in this uh, slam dunk contest. How much fun right now to have Walter Bond out there on the microphone, one of the all-time uh, gopher greats. You know, you got Kevin Lynch down there. You've got all these guys coming back to take part in this. Just a great atmosphere out here at the barn. Very well organized. You know, they've had this now, I guess this is almost, what, the sixth year of this. And uh, this seems to be the best one in regard to getting former players back. And, um, you know, Walter Bond, uh, he is, um, you know, not only a former gopher and a gopher great, but he now makes big money touring the country as a motivational speaker he he talks to Honeywell he talks to 3M he talks to uh, you know General Mills all these corporations that they have uh, motivational uh, concepts and speeches and all of that and um, he is I don't know if anyone has had a chance to hear him he's got a web page too that has some samples of his work he is unbelievable in regard to being a motivational uh, speaker and uh, he's going all over the country doing talks. And doing a tremendous job here tonight at the barn. Andre Holland's out there taking part in the three-point contest, one of the guys we touched on. Mike Grimm, not only voice of the Minnesota Gopher men's basketball team, also voice of the Golden Gopher football team. It's homecoming weekend. Gopher hockey team picked up a 5-1 win over Michigan State earlier today. Mike, tomorrow you've got the call, Minnesota and Northwestern. Gophers had a bye last week, so they've been, be, uh, been able to prepare for this game for two weeks now. Meanwhile, Northwestern suffered their first loss on the season a week ago to Penn State. Going to be very fun out there. Sounds like it could be very sloppy as well. <laughs> Conditions could be ripe for some uh, good old-fashioned Big Ten football in the mud. I'm excited about the game. It's homecoming. Uh, and I think, it, you know, this is an interesting early season, I think, crossroads game for both teams. I think you can make an argument that even though it's early in the year, both teams have a certain set of goals. Uh, the Northwestern team thinks it's a legitimate contender for the division title. There's no way they can win the division if they lose tomorrow. That's how important I think this game is. They lose tomorrow. They've got Nebraska, Michigan, and Iowa over the course of the next three weeks. Now, two of those three are at home, but even so, uh, three, three losses isn't going to get it done here. So they've got to win tomorrow. They think they're a legitimate title contender for the division. Minnesota wants to make a bowl game. I think that's the natural progress in year two, mm -hmm. particularly after you start 4-0. and Now, if you don't win tomorrow if you're Minnesota, you look at the rest of that schedule, you got to get two wins out of there. You're, you'd be sitting at 4-2 and two if you lose that game, 0-2 in the division. Um, you know, trending maybe the wrong way after that hot start. I don't know where you're going to find the other two. If you win tomorrow, re, you rekindle the confidence, and all of a sudden now you're looking, okay, bowl game, one more is all you need. So I think it's a must win for both teams in the desperate times, call for desperate measures. Wouldn't be surprised at all if you see um, – something crazy from the Gophers tomorrow. You know, they're going to uh, – Jerry Kill will pull out the stops. He's showing that when he – you know, if there's a time to gamble and he thinks you can cash in on it, um, I don't know what it will be, but I'll bet you we'll see something fun tomorrow. And I think the Gophers will win the game in the fourth quarter. All right, so if you're not at the game at TCF Bank Stadium, of course you can join Mike Grimm and the rest of the radio crew on the Gopher Radio Network. Mike, thanks so much Good for stopping you, by. Really appreciate it. And we'll uh, look forward to your call tomorrow. And then Golden Gopher – Football and basketball throughout the rest of the season. Sounds great. Thank you. All right, Mike Grimm joining us. We'll send things down to Walter Bond on the mic. And when we come back, Matt Nelson going to talk some gopher women's basketball with Corbu Status. That's next. This is the Big Ten Digital Network. California. They tied again? One shot. All right now, we don't have all night. Somebody's gotta go ahead and win this thing, man. I'm like 43, I need to go to bed. Okay, I wanna be in the bed by the time the news come on, okay? All right. Y'all like to stay up night watching Jersey Shores, I'm old school. One more rack. Go for fans, are you ready? On your mark, get set, go. All right, let's give it up for Julian LL Cool J Welch. 